Kaylin, tell me what it means when someone says they want multiple streams of income. Tell the people. Why do the people need multiple streams of income? <laughs> COVID says it all. What's the difference between having an LLC for your business and being trademarked? For me, I'm trying to get multiple streams of income because I'm trying to retire early. 62, can't do it. What's going on, y'all? Welcome to another episode on the Strange Chasers Show. You got myself, Kayla. And I'm Candice. Glad that you're here joining us on another great episode, another great topic. Mm -hmm. um, you know how we typically get started. Uh, we can't start a, another episode before me and Candice tag up with each other. So, Candice, what's been going on these past couple of weeks with you? You know what? I think... I've been slow rolling and trying to um, focus on my new job. You know, I got the new job mm -hmm. and trying to see what's happening and get myself kind of integrated there and just keeping things going with Pretty Prince. It's wedding season. So, I mean, things are happening mm -hmm. on top of each other every week. Just go like it's like during wedding season it's automated you know yeah, one thing yeah. i am trying to do is be more consistent on my social media posts mm. i follow this one guy who like literally um one of his things is like you gotta make the content right like <laughs> if you make the content you gotta post the content you gotta just be deliberate about it because the algorithm rewards consistency like mm -hmm. just do it do it do it so i'm trying to be more consistent i got up to once a day i feel like that deserves hand claps once a day is very good. Thank you. I, say, I appreciate it. Once a day it. is very he, good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He says three times a day, like, to catch, like, uh, the example is, you know, some people use theirs, like, 10% of the day. Mm -hmm. There are people who are on there all the time, checking their phone five times a day. And, of course, there's, like, the morning, noon, and nighters, right? Mm -hmm. So, if you do three times a day, you catch most people. I get it. Once a day is where I'm at right now, though. So, that's, that, that's interesting, because I've heard that same thing that... You should be posting minimum three times a day, Duh. like one by like 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. Then you want another midday, like 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. And then you want one right after 6, 630 yep, or 6 before 7. Uh -huh. But like what I've noticed, so I've done that before. OK, but what I notice is it seems like the more I post, OK, the less engagement I get. Oh, so like the first post was real heavy okay on engagement the likes the comments the shares then when i did the second post it reduced some okay then by the time i got to the third one it reduced even more so i don't know if it's like social overload okay on the my followers uh-huh but again it's like who am i to argue with this with the, marketing guru who, right with the wizard right yeah, who's proven it but for me i didn't see it working Hmm. And, and then even taking another another step, like if I only post like just let's just say once every other day. OK, I see my engagement high all the time. Now, is that engagement with followers you already have, though, or is this outside engagement? Because I guess the point of his is you're trying to reach the masses outside of those who you already follow. Or so, you already follow you. so I would say a little bit of both. Okay. So. When I'm posting like every other day, I, I get a lot of shares oh, from my followers, I see, which is allowing me to get new followers because mm, they're mm -hmm. sharing it constantly. Yeah. So when I check the share, but I'm like, dang, like it's the first okay. hour and I'm sitting on 25 shares. OK, now I'm like, OK. And then all of a sudden you start seeing the followers go up I see. and that's consistent. Okay. So. So even for like Go Stretch, mm -hmm. it, to me, I feel like I found our path or Your model uh -huh. in terms of growing that social media. Because okay. like, again, I tried the three posts a day. I didn't see it really working. OK. But what I know is if I post once every two or three days, OK, we're going to get an influx of followers. Your battle rhythm. You know, the, I think the thing that I struggle with beyond the consistent posting, though, is finding the right um, audience. Because um, for Pretty Prince, a lot of my follower, a lot of the people I follow, therefore my feed, right? And a lot of the people that I notice follow me are other industry people, right? Mm -hmm. So people who are in the same wedding industry, whether it's dresses or magazines or whatever, right? Like all yeah. of that. But that's not who I'm 
after, right? Yes. That's not the audience. The audience is the single woman who is about, or the engaged woman, right? That's the audience. And so trying to get to them, I think is my struggle because I know that I, as a woman who once was going through that situation, you know, like I know that once I got engaged, I, that's what I wanted to see. So I was after mm -hmm. the, the people. So I know they're in there. I'm just trying to figure out where they are. You know, yeah, you just got to tap into their interests. Uh, true story. When we first started Ghost Stretch, okay. Um, this this uh person who has or this company, they have like a lot of followers. Uh, they call themselves like a practitioner in the in the industry, right? Uh, when we made like one of the first couple of uh, posts, they had DM'd us and said, "Hey, you need to be using uh like fascial stretch therapy." Okay. So. I told Mickey, like, no, we're not using hashtag fascial stretch therapy because the average person like me and you don't know what fascial, fascial stretch, stretch therapy, therapy is. I don't mm -hmm. need the industry to know that I exist. Right. I need the people, to know the that. everyday consumers, right. know that I exist. So instead of using a big term like fascial stretch therapy, uh -huh. I'm just going to use pain, leg pain, uh, back pain. Mm -hmm. Because these are things that the everyday person is searching, Which, yeah. not no fascial stretch therapy. Got it. So you're spot on with making sure that you find yeah. the people not in your industry. Because I don't care if y'all liking my pictures and yeah. giving me follows. Beautiful. You're not my clientele. <laughs> you are not the person who's buying this. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Like, wonderful. Yeah. I see you, so, so definitely keep that in mind. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so that was my last ish <laughs> two weeks is like working on that. Just trying to think through that situation and, you know all the kind of tweaks and all that. And, and part of it is just, like I said, being consistent with my content. So mm -hmm. that has been my focus for the last couple of weeks. How mm -hmm. about you? Um, uh, same. Um, literally I've been trying to sit down and carve out some time to make like a social media calendar. Oh, just, just to give me some organization mm -hmm. for like posting, like ghost threats, stream chasers, yeah, you know, stuff like that. Um, I haven't gotten around to it, okay. but it's in my head, Okay. but I need to get it on paper. Okay. And that's probably been going on the last probably three weeks now, <laughs> um, just in terms of putting that together. Uh -huh. um, other than that, like trying to get, you know, build out our, our guests, you know, for um, the stream chases out there, mm -hmm. giving them quality content, mm -hmm. um, getting some knowledgeable guests um so they can take things away yeah. you know stuff like that the things yeah all the all those things mm -hmm. and, and like i said i'm not uh i mentioned this before in a previous episode but um i'm getting closer and closer about that truck are the trucking business yeah okay yeah you know what's funny about that is that i ended up doing some research on trucking this weekend because mm -hmm. you know i told you my grandfather owns a bus business mm -hmm. so he kind of recruited me to do some things mm. and so i also had to put my knowledge on paper and do some stuff for him it's, it was interesting yeah we'll have to collab oh yeah cool <laughs> <laughs> all right um no nah, but that sounds good but yeah stream chasers so we got a good episode for you all today and um, it's probably something that a lot of us need, mm -hmm. or I know for a fact, uh, almost every entrepreneur starting off could benefit from this. And that's like shared office space. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of times when you look to start a business, um, if if you don't have a space in your home or if you just don't want to do it in your home, most of the time you need some type of space, whether that's industrial, office, whatever. Yeah. Eventually people do want storefronts, but that's a whole nother ball game. Yeah. So typically people start in like office space. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we're going to kind of get into today. Like the business of having office spaces and what does that look like from a customer clientele? Mm hmm. Um, but in addition, what does that look like from the owner creating these office spaces? True. Um, but yeah, so that's what, that's what we have on hand for you. But before we make any introductions, have you ever uh, had the opportunity or ever had any interest on getting an office space? You know what? Um, let me give you my customer experience. Mm -hmm. um, so y'all know I work in contracts. I've been working in contracts for a long time. Um, when I was at two jobs ago. I was a contracting officer for um, Events DC. 
um, one, uh, as a contracting officer, you get contacted by businesses all day long trying to like basically sell you their services. Mm -hmm. So this guy, we were looking for a security company to do some things, whatever. So this guy contacted me and said, hey, um, you know, I'm XYZ. I want to, you know, talk to you about my business. I want to go down the road. And he basically gave me his list of services, his statement mm -hmm. of capabilities, if you will, and said, can we meet to go over these things? So I was like... I guess, because <laughs> as a contractor, you're busy. Yeah. Eventually, I was like, fine, fine, I'll go. Mm -hmm. And I had never had an experience with a shared office space before that. Right. Okay. So this was this would have been my first experience. So he gave me the address. I said, sure, I go down there. The shared office space was so nice. When I first walked in, I said, now wait a minute, my my it was red flags was going off a little bit because I was like, he was a nice guy. Don't get me wrong, yeah. he was professional yeah. and all that, but his portfolio said to me, you can't afford this office space, but it was very nice. Mm -hmm. Right. So I sat through his presentation. He did the whole, we went to the conference room. He did the whole thing. It was very nice. Mm -hmm. We did end up doing some business together, mm -hmm. but what helped me sell him on, sell him to me as a business person right. was the shared office space. It was mm. cause he was professional, but it helped that his surroundings were also professional, yeah. like so professional that I was questioning him a bit, you know, yeah. like, wait a minute, yeah. but it Is was, this it was really nice. <laughs> and, and I just was like, and there was a secretary at the front and it was like, I was a little confused at first because yeah. that was not what I was expecting, but mm -hmm. I'm sure it, the return on investment for him was very high. Oh yeah. In turn, it made me then use a shared office space. Mm. I, you know, as a person, I meet cl wedding clients all the time. Mm -hmm. So I decided to uh, book a shared office space for one of my clients. And I think it went over really well on her because she ended up being one of my, we are good friends now associates mm. like we talk all the time but she booked a series of things for me usually people just like oh let me just get the invitations or let me just get the things mm -hmm. like she did the invitations the this the that like she yeah. did the whole suite and mm -hmm. i i have to say it was credited to the shared office space that's cool yeah that's cool yeah at least that's what i think it is it could have been me <laughs> no that that professionalism <laughs> is on is is on a whole nother level yeah um but no that's great how about you um i've looked at a shared office space Two different times. Um, one, maybe a few years ago when I had this crazy idea of, um, I, well, I wanted this large creative space. Is it a crazy idea, Caitlin? Is it? It's not crazy, but I might have been over my head. Okay. <laughs> a little bit. Like the things that I want. I'm talking about, like, I wanted, like, um, like commercial kitchen. Okay. Um, for people to come in there, like, because chefs, well, just real quick. People that they have food trucks. Yes. Um, most of the time, they spend a lot of money because they can't or they're not supposed to prep that food in their home. Right. They're supposed to prep that food in a commercial kitchen. Right. Who do you know who has a commercial kitchen? Not a lot of people. Not a lot of people. No. That's a great income stream. Okay. <laughs> if you have a commercial kitchen Ding. as a rental space. With a cash. So, so like, but, but I, I looked at that as like creative because... Cooking is a form of creativity. You okay. know, you're getting in the kitchen, you're trying out dishes. So I was like, I wanted some of that. I wanted a podcast studio in there. I wanted um, like a fashion design element with like sewing machines oh, and all that. A lot. But but it but it wasn't a lot. Like you said, is it is it really crazy? <laughs> yeah, right. And right. there to the, till this day in Peachy County, there's still nothing like that that exists. Okay. Today. Today. But it's just so large. Call Kaylin. <laughs> it's so large of an idea and it's cost some money. Yeah. So I was like, well, let me just get myself back to reality and maybe just focus on a podcast studio. <laughs> and, and so so I went to Regis down in National Harbor. Okay. And got a quote, um, you know, just to see like what it would cost. I think for and, and this is kind of hard for you all, Stream Chasers. So our studio, our podcast studio, it's it's a nice size room. I would say about, I don't know, 10 by, let's just say 10 by 8, 10 okay. by 9, right? Okay. It's like half of that. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're very, they're, like this one was very small. Okay. Um, Because it was like the only thing they had open. But I want to say they were trying to charge me like $1,300. <gasps> Because it's the National Harbor. Okay. All right. So they're like, oh, you get the nice views. And I'm like, I'm not even going to be in here. about them views? Yeah, I'm not even going to be in here. Yeah. Mind you, the office didn't even have windows. <laughs> so, so you know, they're trying to sell I you on that did. type of stuff. <laughs> um, but in my mind, I was like, I'll just get this studio and rent it okay. out as a podcast studio to people. Okay. But me, I'm like a, if people don't know me, I'm like, 
I'm all about business, but like how we talked about um, just before this show about like taking risk. Yeah. I'm very risk avert. Oh, are you? So, yes. It's like, because at the end of the day, when you, when you have a family, you got to feed, yeah. you got bills, you got to pay. Uh huh. I'm not trying to put our family in no bad yeah. situation. Okay. So in my mind, I could have moved on this podcast studio, but I didn't know anything about podcasts. Okay. So that was going to be my fallback because if no one's renting the space, yeah. at least I can still market and say, hey, you can come here to do your podcast or or in addition, I can edit the podcast, okay. which is a whole nother income stream. Which you know something about. Now, but not <laughs> three years ago when I had this idea. Got it. Okay. So so I was just like, ah, it's too risky. Okay. So I stepped away. But that was the only time I really, oh, that was my first experience of like really seeing that a shared office. office spaces are out there. Because all this time I had heard about a WeWork yeah never knew what we work was uh-huh. but I, I hear i hear about them all the time yeah and then i found regis okay then i was like okay this is the thing okay but then leads us into our guest today mm-hmm. uh so we have a guest today which is chico um he's very successful um so you heard us talk about these office spaces he has numerous office spaces and i'm not talking about just the office i'm talking about the buildings with the office spaces <laughs> within, in them. Within the, yeah, okay. with the office spaces in them. So we're going to tap into Chico today and get into the whole business of office spaces, what that looks like from a business owner, some of the things that he's learned. And I hope you all are able to take some things away from this uh, conversation. So before we get started into all that business stuff, first, we're glad to have you, Chico. So welcome to the show. Welcome yes. to the show. Thank you all for having me. Mm-hmm. No, I appreciate you coming through. So before, uh, like I said, we get started, can you kind of just set the stage for the listeners and let people know, like, like how did entrepreneurship come about for you? Was that something that was always ingrained in you or was that something that somebody introduced you to? Like, hey, you know, you need to be an entrepreneur. I mean, I think for me, like, you know, when I think back, I think it, it was a lot earlier um, than when I actually made this the switch, mm. but I think just in general, like I always just wanted to be better than I was, mm. or just to be great to to like put myself in a situation where I'm always learning. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I made the decision to just kind of switch to entre- entrepreneurship, is when I had a job, my nine to five, and I just felt like I was just doing the best I already can, mm-hmm. right? And, and and I didn't feel like it was going to stretch me anymore, right? Mm-hmm. And at the same time, I was reading a lot about entrepreneurship, reading a lot about entrepreneurs and learning about entrepreneurs. And I just felt like I needed to take myself outside of this comfort zone, which was a job for me at the time, and explore something different, which was entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's when I made that mental, but then at the same time, that action uh, switch to mm-hmm. just quit my job at the age of 26, even though I had a thousand dollars in my bank account, and mm. just pursue entrepreneurship full time. At yeah. 26, let me yeah. tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I would have did it. I would be like, "Woo, I'm gonna have to wait till next payday." Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like, so like, mm-hmm. so how how long did that take to build up that courage? A long time. A long, a long time. time. I okay. tell you, a long time because the the, uh, the first time I wanted to do it. Um, I had just graduated college. I was working for a staffing agency at the time Mm -hmm. and I was working there for two years and I was learning a lot. I was doing a lot. I was coming to work before my manager. I was leaving after my managers Mm. um, because I was just trying to learn as much as I can. I always kind of knew in the back of my head I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't know what that I mean, I didn't know it as an entrepreneur. I just knew I wanted to own my own business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, So. At a job environment, I would do everything, learn everything, and they're, they're probably looking at me like, "What is he doing? He's not getting paid any extra." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but for me, I was just trying to learn as much as I can. And after about two years, I quit that job mm. um, because I thought about that time I was ready. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> it's always a but. <laughs> I wasn't. You know, uh, I went shortly and got another job. Yeah, um, and then. Uh, and then two years into that job, mm-hmm. I was a human resources manager for a healthcare company. Um, two years into that job, I also quit. Mm-hmm. 
And I was like, yeah, I'm really going to do it this time. <laughs> then I had an offer, um, uh, uh, a staffing age, another staffing agency, a big staffing agency, Robert Half. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. They offered me like 70 something thousand. And mm-hmm. mind you, my first two jobs, I was making like $35,000. Okay, yeah. uh, so they offered me like 70 something. I was like, ooh, this is this more is than the double. One. You know yeah. This is the one. Yeah. You know, and I took, I took the job offer and my start date was December uh, 3rd, 2012. Mm-hmm. Walk in at the job. Did great, you know. They loved me there. Uh, it was in DC. Mm-hmm. I hate driving to DC. Yeah, and everybody parking does. and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but they uh, after my first day, uh, my manager came, comes up to me and he's like, "Hey, Chico, you know everybody loves you. You have great energy. Um, looking forward to seeing you tomorrow." Yeah, and I had to tell him, you know. Well, before before that, while I was at the job. Like, you know, I felt like God spoke to me and just said, like, are you going to keep running away from your dreams? Mm. Like, how many times are you going to keep doing this? Yeah. Why don't you just face it? Yeah. And I then I just sat there the whole time making excuses. Yeah. I was like, I just bought my condo. Yeah. I got a car. I only got a thousand dollars in the <laughs> bank account. <laughs> and he and, and, I, and I could just see, you know, visually God just shaking his head like, mm. you know. No, I equipped you for this. Yeah. That's why you have this vision. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So at the end of that day, I had to tell my I had to tell my manager, I was like, hey, it's been fun, but I'm not coming <laughs> back tomorrow. Oh my God. Yeah. So uh, he's like, he's like, Chico, you're you're you're, <laughs> you're joking, you're, you're, right? You're, you're joking, right? Right. Go home, get some rest, you it's know, fine. think about it, and I'll see you tomorrow. Like you're getting yeah. paid seventy K. Exactly. Yeah. So I was like The second day? Yeah, the first day yeah, I was just like, I mean, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, you're not coming back for the second <laughs> yeah, day. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. So I said, I, I'm telling you, I'm being honest with you. I appreciate mm-hmm. the opportunity. I appreciate this, but I got to make the decision now mm-hmm. because for me, I knew something. If I got comfortable with that 70k, yeah. okay, oh yeah, I was never going to quit. Yeah, oh yeah, especially after getting double from what you were used to making. Yeah. Exactly. So I was like, if I start a lifestyle, start around. getting this money, mm-hmm. uh, and start build a lifestyle around 70k, mm-hmm. it's going to be much harder for me to quit my job than making a decision at that 35,000. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. So, so that's I cut it off, right? and then uh, yeah, that was December third, two thousand twelve. And then December 4th, 2012, I was in the I was in the house, you know, <laughs> really trying to figure out yeah. if I made the right de- yeah. decision, you know. <laughs> and then uh, on the 5th, I was like, you know, I'm going to do it. I'm going to drive up to Baltimore, register the company, Perfect Staffing Solutions, and then just see what happens. Yeah. And that's, that's crazy because you had already now spent, what, f- four years, four basically. years in a staffing agency environment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like you said, that's where it works to soak up the game while you are on a job. Exactly. You know, so, so just, just listen to that for a second stream chase is like a lot of us are trying to get off of the job, Mm -hmm. but if you are on the job, make it a purpose to take something from that job every day that you can build for your business. Yep. Yep. There's a million dollar business in every job. Mm. Yeah, there's a million dollar business, business in every job. Think about oh, it. Oh yeah, they were paying me thirty five thousand dollars mm-hmm. to do what I was doing, and what I was doing, I started it as a business, and in two years turned it into a million dollar company. The staffing company. The staffing company. Wow. Right. <laughs> so, but it's like a lot of times when when we're at a job, we're not asking what more can I do. We're mm-hmm. trying to do the least amount of work for the most amount of pay. You're right. It doesn't work like that. You know, you got to take on more responsibility, learn as much as you can and see other opportunities you can learn because that is if you can do that fast mm-hmm. and get out of that situation, mm. you can make a lot of money. Mm. You really can. And even if you know, we acknowledge all types of income streams here. So yes. even if one of your income streams is going to be the nine to five, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. That that point still works. Get there, learn the things, flip it, move to the next job. Mm-hmm. Like you'd be surprised how much you can learn in a short amount of time and how much someone else would be willing to pay you for that knowledge. Exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. And then it's like while you're learning Take that knowledge and turn it into value for that company mm-hmm. because that company is going to pay you based on the value that you bring in. Yes. Yeah. You know, uh, what's his name? The CEO of uh, Apple. 
Uh, What's his current name? The new one. The new guy, uh, Tim, Tim Cook. There okay, we go. yeah. He just got paid out seven hundred and fifty million dollars. <laughs> I don't even know what that looked like <laughs> on paper. Like how many zeros is that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just for the fact that he was able to add value for the past yeah. ten years to Apple. That's crazy. It is crazy. The value. So exactly. if you want to do it in a nine to five, mm-hmm. you can. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, or you know, you can start your own thing. Yeah. And call your own shots. Make your own way. Right. Two decisions a year. Two good decisions. Oh yeah, because that's that's the Jeff Bezos uh, thing. Yeah. He said, "Yeah." Was it two or three? I can't remember. I think it's three. Yeah, three I think good it's decisions. Three. He said, "Is his? He just makes his mission to make three good decisions a year." Yeah. And I was like, "What? What's happening?" <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, I feel like we could stop the podcast right now. I'm, I have many things to think about. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but that's good. Yeah. So so. You started the staffing agency. So I started the staffing agency. Of course, I was scared. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a, ho- a house to pay for, mm-hmm. had a car note, and I had $1,000. Mm-hmm. Um, but the good thing was bef- a year before I actually made that jump, mm-hmm. I had a penthouse condo, and I was listing that on Airbnb. Oh, okay. Okay. Way back already. Two, like 2000 and what was that? 2010, late 2010, early 2011. Heard about Airbnb. Always wanted to like rent my property mm-hmm. out, but yeah. I didn't want to do it the normal way in case someone didn't pay or anything yeah. like that or whatever. But Airbnb had just came out. Mm. So then I was like, you know what? I'm going to try this Airbnb thing. So I, I clean up my condo, take really nice pictures. Well, actually, at that time, they used to send someone from Airbnb to send yeah. take pictures. Yeah. Oh. So they sent someone over. He took some great pictures of my studio condo, <laughs> made it look like it was like this yeah. nice luxury. There was only uh-huh. 400 square feet. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> And I listed it on Airbnb. I think it was like 2000 and the, no, 2010, late 2010, like September. Mm-hmm. As soon as I listed it on there, it booked the whole year, the rest of the year from September to December. I was wow. like, whoa, 24 <laughs> hours. Wow. Dang. So I was like, oops, okay, now I got to find somewhere to live because I didn't know where yeah. it. Right. <laughs> so I called my mom up. I was like, hey, you know, you've been, you know, since I graduated college, you've been saying I didn't spend too much time in the house. <laughs> Well, I'm coming back. Yeah, you know? yeah. Here's so, your opportunity. She now. did not mean that. That's not <laughs> right. what she meant. Mm-hmm. Hey, so I told her I was coming back. So I came back and, mm-hmm. and kind of stayed with her. And I was telling myself, if this works for a whole year, mm-hmm. I was going to probably quit my job. That's what I was thinking to myself. Because the Airbnb income, I was charging $99 a night. Okay. Um, so I was bringing in like 30, I was bringing in, no, I'm sorry, $3,000 a month. Right. Mm-hmm. My mortgage was only a thousand dollars okay so i was making a two thousand dollar difference yes. oh, right? yeah then on the side i started um tutoring tutoring accounting and economics and algebra okay. on a platform called wiseant.com mm. and i was charging fifty dollars an hour so mm-hmm. i would tutor 10 hours a week yeah make five hundred dollars Mm-hmm. And then, you know, so $500 every week, that's another mm-hmm. 2000 yeah. So now I was making 4000 I was basically making what they were paying me at my job. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's tight. For a whole year. So I was yeah. like, all right. So it was a little bit comfortable. I'm not comfortable. It was a little bit okay quitting my job Yeah. Uh, with $1,000 in a bet because I was like, even if I didn't work, I will still make yeah this much money yeah. Every, yeah. Single, every single year. So that was the first step I took for it gotcha. to be comfortable before gotcha. I made that decision. Uh, but I was still nervous yeah, and afraid because I didn't know where yeah. that was going to lead to. Because mm-hmm. with business, you all like it never stops. No. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing. So it's like, you know, a lot of people is like, oh, I had a great month. Right. You know, but that doesn't mean nothing. Right. Because yeah. next month can be you can be at zero again. Mm-hmm. So it's like you literally have to keep the needle moving yep. month after month. Yeah, without yeah. the nine to five to support you, because that's the exactly. thing. Yes, yes, yeah. Because once you make that jump, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah, I mean, you can always go back, of course, or you can. can you? I mean, you can, <laughs> yes, but exactly when you get a little, and, and we were talking about this earlier, it's like. It's a different type of freedom you experience. Oh, yeah. Mm. A way different type of freedom. It's not the money. You know, you might not be seeing that consistent $4,000 paycheck Mm -hmm. every month, but you don't have nobody clocking you or pressing you like, Candace, did you get that email? Right. When when am I, are you going to send that email? Did you speak to the vendor? Maybe. Maybe it's always the answer. (laughs) So it's like, yeah, so it's like that type of freedom yeah it's a lot of freedom uh, but at the same time that's also the hard part yeah because when you have a lot of freedom 
then you can decide mm-hmm. not to work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can decide <laughs> not to make that phone call. Mm-hmm. You can decide not to put in um, the marketing efforts to get that new client. Yeah. So that's mm-hmm. where it kind of becomes a little challenging. That's why you want to teach yourself discipline while you already have a job. Mm-hmm. Do the things that you're not even supposed to do. Yeah. Uh, so that, that way you start teaching yourself discipline so that when you do transition to having your own business, uh, you can easily implement those things and um, and make it work. Yeah. Who Jesus. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so now you tutored. We on Airbnb before yeah. Airbnb was Airbnb. Yeah, that, that's just like you was on yeah. that way. Yeah, I remember when Airbnb was like back in 2000. Like I remember getting like really? the initial emails. Yeah, because me and the girls used to travel a lot. Mm-hmm. So like was checking it out. Never booked anything because I was like, this just feels too good to be true. But yeah. like I remember looking at it all like what's yeah, the that's, thing? that's tight yeah. because now it's like everybody's on the Airbnb way. Yeah. yeah. But it's like the fact that you were one of those early adopters. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been there, done that, you know, especially like, <laughs> you know, when, when Obama won the second term from like December to like the end of January, you could charge whatever. I was charging $300 a night. People were paying, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know, for a small studio. Dang. So, yes. Cause you were in DC. Uh, well, I was in Tacoma Park. Oh, okay. Which is Close near enough, enough yeah. to oh, yeah. DC. Oh, yeah. Folks coming in here, they don't know. They don't what, know the difference. Yeah. You know, yeah. They're just looking at the mileage. How far is how, it from exactly. <laughs> exactly. downtown? So, not, not that it's going to take you an hour in traffic. <laughs> exactly. It, you know, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so now we have tutored. We have Airbnb. We have quit our job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we are doing, we registered the perfect staffing. Now what are we doing? So we registered perfect staffing. Uh, December 5th, 2012. Okay. Uh, drove up to Baltimore and did that. And then when I came back down, um, <laughs> I had changed my Facebook status to, um, you know, CEO of Perfect Staffing. Okay. Right? Uh-huh. <laughs> Don't you know how you change it and Facebook pops it yeah, up? Yeah. So yeah. everybody starts congratulating me like, oh, congratulations, yeah, you're yeah. CEO of a company. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like sitting back, like looking at it. I'm like, do they realize that? I mean, although I say CEO, but this is the company I just started today. Yeah, it's one yeah, of yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And there's no revenue. <laughs> exactly. You know, I'm like, I don't think they get it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but you know, and then one of my one of my um previous managers at my first job, he calls me and he's like, Hey Chico, uh, man, I see that you're, you know, uh a CEO of a staffing company. <laughs> mm-hmm. Is this something you started? Because I know you always used to say perfect. Everybody else used to say great yeah. at work, but you always used to say perfect when we asked you how you doing. Mm-hmm. So uh, did you start this? I was like, yeah, I just started it. Mm-hmm. He was like, all right, cool. What do you want to get into? I was like, I want to get into doing the same thing we were doing, mm-hmm. staffing nurses at hospitals. Mm-hmm. He was like, great, but do you have your nurse staffing license? Mm. I was like, uh oh. <laughs> It's like, had the like, plan. Nurse staffing license. What's that? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, to staff nurses at hospitals, you need a nurse staffing license approved by the state of Maryland. Mm. Okay. That was the first time I heard that. Okay. Yeah. So now I had already quit my job. Yeah. <laughs> you, know you had this major I had plan. already started the business. Okay. And I was missing the most important part. Oh, no. Mm. Yeah. So I Googled. I, I went on Google, Googled staff um you know nurse staffing license Uh what to do what to do to get one Mm -hmm. and it's a process you got to write a policy and procedure yeah so that weekend that next week i spent like all day every day writing a 76 page policy and procedure (sighs) put it together submitted it into the state and it took what three to four months before (gasps) Mm -hmm. it got uh, approved it got approved and then mind you at that time i'm paying for office space yeah yeah so i had to find something else so i was like you know, if I can't staff nurses now, what can I staff? I yeah. can staff administrative workers. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what I did, I started applying for jobs as if I was looking for the job. But when I would go to the interviews, I would tell them to hire me as a contractor through the staffing agency. Okay. So mm-hmm. that's how I got the first gig from this education company called To You. Okay. Um, and oh, I know them. Yeah. You know them? yeah I'm yeah. familiar with yeah. that yeah. company. Yeah. yeah. They were two turd then, but then they okay. changed it to you. To you. Mm-hmm. Um, and they brought me on they hired me on as a contractor mm-hmm. due to the staffing agency so like a corp to corp type thing exactly so okay. i went for the interview and i was they were like well, they were gonna hire me as a healthcare recruiter because they were okay. trying to uh bring in nurses from the georgetown program and all that good stuff i see yeah. what you yeah. did yeah, yeah. So, uh-huh. so when they said offer me the job i said hire me through my staffing agency perfect staffing mm. so i came in there that was my first contract yeah then um as as things went along we did i did well 
and they needed five more contractors. Mm. So I brought on five more contractors. And that first year in business, um, while we were working with them, we got our license approval from the state of Maryland to be able to staff nurses. But that first year, I did $400,000 in business. Mm. Uh, and then the yes. next year, 800000 And the following year, one point two. That's amazing. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I'm a manager of people, so I hire people. Yeah. Don't you come to my interview talk about hiring you as a contract <laughs> specialist through your agency. <laughs> but that was, as a recruiter, that's like genius. That's yeah. like next level genius. I don't, yeah. like, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That was smart. Uh-huh. Yeah. I don't know what I would do if I was faced with, like, I hire contract specialists. If right. I was faced with a contract specialist was like, this person's awesome. I don't have to hire them the job. They'd be like, hire me through my contract. That would be like... <laughs> I would be so salty, yeah. but I would probably, yeah. I, I might do it. It just right, depends. Right, you know what right. I mean? Yeah, because the thing is, in life or in a company, it's about the value you provide for yeah. them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you got to, when you go to an interview, you got to communicate the value you're bringing to that organization. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which means you have to go study that organization before you show up. Yeah. So for me, in, in that interview, I communicated, or in any interview, I communicated yeah. the value that I will bring to them. I wish they saw it. They tried me out. It did work. Mm -hmm. And then they gave me the opportunity to hire five more um, contractors for them. And I just think that like doing what I do for a living, right? That is such a smart way to be able to illustrate the value because to be honest, responding to an RFP is it's paper. It's a paper document. Cause that's the other way you could have went about it. Right. Is companies out here looking for temp Mm -hmm. staffing agencies respond to an RFP. Like we, we did that episode, right. We tell you how to do it and all that kind of stuff, but it's a lot more difficult to communicate your value on paper than it is on a face to face -face. interview. That's why I was like, that was next level genius. I'm just going to say it. (laughs) Now that was real good. That was real good. All right. So then you have, built up the staffing company Mm -hmm. uh, and you're in business for three years now. Right. So, yep. Built up the staffing company in business for three years, but there was a lot of stuff that went wrong. And of course, with the the staffing company, (laughs) Um, the first year, I didn't even know that I was supposed to be taking out payroll taxes for Uh employees. I didn't, uh, yeah, I didn't know <laughs> until I got the bill the next year and the government is saying that I owe $80,000 and I didn't have, yeah. I wasn't putting up, putting yeah. out money yeah. on the side to do that because I wasn't even, I wasn't even yeah. paying myself the yeah. first year. Yeah, first year you didn't I didn't pay myself. Liquid cash. Oh, I didn't no. have it. So and then they give you a time frame to pay that. All right. So I, I was like, whoa. And then <laughs> yeah, so I got through, that, got through that. Got through that the second year, pretty much. And then the third, the, the beginning of the third year, one of the largest larger contracts that we had, um, you know, the lady hadn't paid us for about three months. And oh, I no. reached out to her. And I'm like, hey, you know, I got to pay my staff. I'm, I mean, I'm already paying my staff already, but I'm running out of money. Yeah. When are you all going to pay this invoice? So she breaks it down to me that they're going bankrupt. <gasps> mm. And I had already paid out about sixty to $80,000 to my nurses already. Mm. I needed that money. Yeah. I am literally dying. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I was like, wow. So everything that I've built in the past three years is about to disappear yeah. from this situation. So I had to cut back on a lot of different things, you know, just to make the company survive. Because I, you know, but at that same time, I was like, you know what? I need to start another business. I need to create another stream of income. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh-huh. And I was like, all right, if I'm going to create another stream of income, I'm going to start another business. I need to start something that caters to entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Because one of the things that I had a hard time finding was an affordable office space. The first place I went to, they were trying to charge me twenty five hundred dollars for a 10 by 10. Mm-hmm. Second place I went to, they were like, you know, you just quit your job. You don't have any credit. Yeah. You know, then the third place I went to, they were trying to get me to sign a lease for about five years. Yeah. yeah. I was Lock like, you in. I was, like, I was like, I don't even know if my business yeah. is going to survive. I don't know if this this location going to be good in five, five years. Exactly. Yeah. So it's just like, so I thought about those things. I was like, you know what? I need to create a company um, that caters to entrepreneurs that provide affordable, professional, and flexible workspace solutions. Okay. Mm. And, you know, at that time, I started reading about WeWork, mm-hmm. Regis, and companies like that Mm -hmm. and i just wanted to make it a little bit different you know uh take the what regis is good at which is private offices Mm -hmm. because that's what they focus on we work usually at that time used to focus mostly on co-working yeah Mm -hmm. so i was like okay take the private office situation from regis but take the cool feel 
from WeWork. We, mm-hmm. Yeah. Put it together, but make it affordable. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's how Perfect Office came about. Mm. You know, sketched it out. I remember so clearly. Um, August 14th, went to my, uh, went went up to Baltimore, registered <laughs> mm-hmm. the company August 14th, 2014. So it's been seven years now. And then boom, we got started. My <laughs> landlord at the time, so, because folks always want to know how I got into it. Yeah. So, all right. So, the space that I was renting when I was building the staffing company mm-hmm. was almost like a co-working space. It had like tw- 20 offices. Okay. okay. But the landlord at the time, um, it was kind of like a space where um, they would put other tenants that, that were having problems. Mm-hmm. So, they would downgrade them to something a little bit more affordable. Uh, so, it wasn't really something that they were really like in the business of yeah, doing. It was yeah. just something else. So in that 20 space, they only had three companies in there. Oh. I was the fourth. Mm. So when I got in there building the staffing company, I was there, I was in there every day. Yeah. So I realized, I was like, dang, there's no other companies. Like, there's all, only these other three mm-hmm. people in here, yeah. but they still got a plenty of space. So I asked them, hey, do you guys need help filling this space? Like, why <laughs> is it only like three, four of us yeah. in here? Yeah. yeah. They were like, yeah, I mean, it's not something that we really focus on. Um, but sure, if you want to help, you can. <laughs> yeah. I was like... I yeah, add that I'll value help. to him. Right. <laughs> I was like, I'll help. I've always been interested in real estate. Yeah. Um, so I was like, I'll help. Um, he was like, How much are you gonna charge us? I was like, I'm not gonna charge you anything. I'm already here. Yeah. Right? I'm already here, you know. So I'll just if you have any uh tours that you need to do, just call me, let me know. I'll take care of them when they come here. Uh-huh. Mm. So I was doing that. I uh I signed the first person. Mm-hmm. I was like, wow, this feels good, you know. <laughs> um, then I started doing my own marketing to tr- fill the space. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Six months later, that whole twenty offices was filled. Jeez. So they call me up to their corporate office. I'm about to say you didn't charge them. No, I didn't. I didn't. Sometimes you gotta. <laughs> you see the bigger play. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you gotta add that value. Uh huh. For the bigger play. Okay. If I went in and I asked them. Without 100%. giving any value. Yes. If I ask them for a certain percentage, they're going to look at me like I'm foolish okay. or I'm crazy. Uh-huh. But the best way to get what you want is to first add value. Yes. So I added value. Mm-hmm. And when they called me up to corporate and they were like, hey, man, like, how are you doing this? We've tried for two years and we didn't really weren't able to fill this. Yeah. How'd you do this? I was like, well, I mean, I just, you know, got out there, marketed, communicated mm-hmm. and all that good stuff. Uh, Facebook, yard signs, a whole bunch of stuff. So they were like, hmm. Do you mind continuing to manage this for us? And we'll just pay you a percentage of the money that comes in. Mm. Said, sure. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's what they did. So did that while I was building the staffing company. Mm -hmm. So when that situation started happening to me in the staffing company Mm -hmm. and I wanted to start something else, I went back to them and I said, hey, I realize you all have a lot of different buildings. Mm -hmm. Why don't we do this same situation in a lot of the buildings you all have and I manage yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So at that point, that's when he like broke it down to me. He's like, hey, Chico, I mean, it is exciting. We're glad that you filled our space, but that's not the type of business we're in. We're in the business yeah. of buying buildings and and bigger clients. Our clients mostly pay us twenty thousand to fifty thousand dollars a month. Mm-hmm. We're not interested yeah. in seven hundred, a thousand dollars a month tenants because it's more hands on. Yeah. Yeah. But we just don't have that capability. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay. Understood. Mm-hmm. I said, you know what? That's the business I want to go in. Mm-hmm. I want to deal with the clients yeah. that are less than a thousand. You know, they're paying about less than a thousand dollars a month mm-hmm. yeah. in rent. Do you have a space that I can rent from you? Uh-huh. I pay you that twenty thousand. I'll be your customer for that twenty thousand, mm-hmm. thirty thousand, forty thousand. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I subdivide it into smaller office spaces and take care of these entrepreneurs that are paying between five hundred and a thousand. Mm-hmm. They were like, "Yeah, we do have a space that's been empty <laughs> for about three years in Beltsville." Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Come take a look at it. If you like it, you know, we can rent it out to you. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how our first location came about. When I had that me- had that meeting with them on August 13, 2014, mm-hmm. um, walked through the space and I knew I could work with it. It didn't look like nothing, but I knew yeah. I could work with it. Mm-hmm. Um, so when they said, so go next day, I drove up August 14, 2014. I drove up to Baltimore, registered the company. And then started and launched the first space in November of that year. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you were, and let me get the timeline right. So you filled that first location for them where you were yes. while you were doing the staffing before you registered your current company. Yes. Got it. Yes. To just kind of feel it out, 
see if it was something that you could do and were interested in. And once it worked out, you said, well, let me see something. Right. Well, at that time when I was filling it for them, I was just doing it just to fill it for them. Okay. I didn't have the idea of the business yet. Uh It was, I was filling it for them in hopes that they would open it in their other buildings and I would manage it. Okay. Um, But then when I confronted them and they said, that's not something that they're interested in at that point, I'm glad I thought Mm -hmm. fast enough to say, Mm Mm-hmm. I'm interested in it. Do you have a building that I can rent from you, yeah. pay you, and then I do it myself? Are you still um, working with that company? So am I still renting from them? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, I still rent from them because I still have our Beltsville location. Okay. But the cool thing was, so we started the Beltsville location, mm-hmm. 26 offices, right? We had an opportunity to have 50, but they weren't comfortable with me having 50 offices <laughs> because I had already been managing only 20 for them in Laurel. Yeah. So they were like, okay, we'll start you with half of the space. Yeah. And then we'll give you the other half uh, once you once you fill up the other, yeah. The, yeah. the first half. Yeah. But the crazy thing about it is that the first half, they didn't even have a front desk. People had to come in from the back. Wow. So I didn't realize that for, at first when I was making a deal. I just yeah. wanted, yeah. I just yeah. wanted just to get wanted into this. Yeah. yeah. But then I realized the mailman was missing, uh, you know, like couldn't mm. find us where we were. Yeah. And at that point, that's when I had to do something I wasn't expecting to do, which is hire staff to man the space. Yeah. Yeah. Because at first I was thinking, okay, I'll be doing my own thing, a staffing company in Laurel, Bellsville, it'll run itself because entrepreneurs mm-hmm. don't really need much. Yeah. Uh, they just need access to their space. Access, yeah. But then the mail situation, when they weren't getting their mail, they're like, Chico, I haven't gotten any mail for like the past two weeks. <laughs> yeah. What's going on? So I yeah, called so a postal that's service. One of the first problem. Yeah. Exactly. I called a postal service. They're like, we don't even know you how to get into you all. Okay. Uh, so I was like, you got to go through the back, through the dark alley, you know. And, yeah. You know, <laughs> they was like, yeah, no. Yeah. Uh-uh. They were like, no. So I had to hire staff. And then the first staff, what they pretty much did was just like watch the door for the mail person. Okay. Watch the back for the mail mm. person. And then, but that motivated us to fill up that first 26. And then I went back to them, uh, the owners of the building. And I said, hey, we filled the first 26. We need the front part so we can have an actual receptionist. Yeah. And then at the same time, I'm glad that I was um, thinking of expansion. So I said, hey, that Laurel space that I'm managing for you all, since you all don't want to be in a business, I want to take up that Laurel space and also add another 20 offices on the second floor because they had a vacancy on the second floor. Yeah. And then I did a deal that way to assume that under perfect office, that space that I was in, and then another additional space. And that's how we got two locations and a total of, uh, 50 here and a total of 40 here mm-hmm. mm. and then that started and then with the third location I was like hmm I'm already working with them what if our relationship goes sour mm-hmm. I need to have another landlord that's yeah. outside of them mm-hmm. that's how I ended up in Lanham our third space mm-hmm. gotcha. and we um, acquired a whole entire floor mm-hmm. that we built out to have uh, 50 offices and mm-hmm. And I love the idea of coming up to a floor and we had the whole situation. Yeah. Yeah. So then the next couple locations, we started just <laughs> taking up 15,000 to 20,000 square feet, which is a lot of space. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that's ball status yeah, right there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that was, that that's was tight. how I started. That's tight. So, so fast forward into today, how many locations do you have now? So we have a total of 13 buildings, mm-hmm. um, but. 12 locations. Okay. Okay. Um, and um, a total of 900 private office tenants. Nice. Yeah, 900 private office tenants. And we have, this year, we're launching um, Alexandria, Fairfax, Gaithersburg, a third Lanham, and a Riverdale. So we got five more coming <laughs> this year. So by the nice. end of this year, we should be at uh, 19 locations. Congratulations on Thanks. that. Thanks. The man had $1,000 in his pocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just... I just want to underscore yeah. that we had 19 locations from $1,000 in our pocket. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, that's a, crazy. Set the steam for the yeah. people in case they missed the fact that we <laughs> here from $1,000. Yeah. But you can't overlook the hard work and determination oh, that course. he was putting in from the very beginning. Though. This is true. And the stream chasers are going to get tired of hearing us say this. Come on. But you know what you got to do. You got to do the work. Yeah. That's what we say. You got to do the work. And he was literally putting in the work when he was a W-2 employee for a job, giving them way more value. Like you said, coming Mm -hmm. in before the manager, staying after the manager. Yeah. 
volunteering to do other tasks, even as a business owner, participating or stepping up to say, hey, I'll give the tours. Yep. Just because I have an interest. I like, you know, I thought about real estate, mm-hmm. you know, like you said. So, I mean, that you can't really overlook those things. You cannot. Yeah. So, People would like to fast forward past yeah, You cannot. Yeah. So just don't think you can have $1,000 <laughs> in your pocket <laughs> and pop up with right. 900 tenants. Okay. <laughs> you it's know, because... And Chico and I talked about this earlier, but a lot of people want that overnight success or that quick come up. Doesn't mm-hmm. exist. Doesn't exist. Yeah, you yes. got to put in the work. And because like in life, I believe there's there's a certain amount of work that you got to do if you want to be a millionaire. Mm-hmm. There's a certain amount of work you got to do if you want to be a, a, a 10 millionaire or whatever. Mm-hmm. The faster you can do that work, better. Mm-hmm. But you can't skip it. Yeah. You know, you can't. You, you just can't like, you know, for me in my mindset, I'm just like, if I want to make this a certain amount of money or build a certain amount of wealth, I already know in my mind, I got to put in the work. Yeah. But if I can put the work in early, mm-hmm. even better. But a lot of times us as individuals, we try to skip the work. We try to find shortcuts, but shortcut ain't going to cut it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not going to cut it. So, so, all right. So now I like to kind of get into some of like the business things and just this yeah. is just a general question that this is relates to like real estate, I guess, which is what this is. But it's like, once you acquire your first space and then you start seeing that that model works and now you're ready to acquire the second space. Mm -hmm. How does that look like to the bank? Because, you know, like, Mm. um, and like I said, I don't know what the build out cost is, but you literally had to get a build out done. I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, For the first space. And then, you you know, once you're able to prove that you have a good model, how easy is that to just go back to the bank a year or two or three years later? Like, all right, I'm ready for the second. And now I'm ready for the third and keep expanding like that. Yeah. So very good question. Uh, And I don't think a lot of people ask me that question. Uh But then again, I've never actually sat down and thought about that question. Uh But I'm glad you asked that question because that leads me to back to value add. Mm. I didn't realize that until my third space. Okay. So the value add that I added to my first um, landlord in terms of helping them fill 20 offices, right? Mm -hmm. That value add helped me skip the process of them asking me for my financials. Mm. So you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So now, because I had experience and I had added value and they owned that first building that I was going to lease out, they didn't. They weren't worried about whether I could fill the space. Mm-hmm. They just asked me, how much are you going to charge for these? And of course, they did the math. They're yeah. like, okay, if he's going to charge this, he's going to be able to pay us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So then I was able to do that with the first space. Then they allowed me to expand. Mm-hmm. Then they allowed me to get the second space mm-hmm. from them. <laughs> now, I didn't realize what you're talking about until I went to the a new, a different landlord, uh-huh. mm-hmm. my third location. And they were like, what's your credit score? Yeah. <laughs> Send your bank information for the past two years. Yeah. All your and information. All my information. I'm like, whoa, whoa. Uh-huh. I was like. They didn't ask me for this. Yeah. They're like, well, we don't care if they asked you for it. This is what you need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then we get on the table and negotiate and build out. Mm-hmm. So the first landlord, they just they just did it. Yeah. They were like, okay, you're a new tenant coming in. There's a certain level of build out. And I wasn't asking for much. I was just like, do the carpet, do the um paint. And they did they mm-hmm. did that. Mm-hmm. But the third place, it was like they needed to do some work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, I was like, then so they showed me the number, like mm-hmm. $400,000. Mm-hmm. Expensive, right. like I said. <laughs> so, and mind you, uh, to start Perfect Office, I had borrowed $10,000 from Perfect Staffing to start Perfect Office. Okay. okay. So all that money was already invested in those first two yeah. locations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then paying staff and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I didn't have no money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But... Um, <laughs> So then this is where negotiation comes to play. I say, hey, guys, think about it. The whole second floor is empty and it's been empty. I researched it's been empty Mm -hmm. for a couple of years. You all just bought this building and you all are probably trying to get this occupancy 
up to 90 yeah. percent so mm-hmm. you can refinance or sell the building mm-hmm. think about it this way i'm an individual that's coming and i'll take up the whole entire floor and i promise you i will be able to pay you yeah it's better on your books to have a building that has high occupancy than not mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he's looking at me he's like okay this boy <laughs> this guy is mm-hmm. talking the truth mm-hmm. <laughs> but you're gonna have to come up with some money yeah. to pay for, for this build out yeah so i said you know what we don't need to have a, an expensive build out. Just give me the simple stuff. I just need paint and done, and I just need the carpets clean. Mm-hmm. We'll take it the way it is. <laughs> you know, and then so that brought down the build out, but then I put it on him. I put it on them to do it. Uh-huh. So I said, if you want a client like me to come in and increase your, you're going to make more money from me over time. Yeah. You're gonna, let's yeah. sign a seven year lease. Mm-hmm. Um, the monthly that I'm going to be paying mm-hmm. uh, is going to, you know, you're going to make a lot more money on, yeah. the, on the back end. So uh-huh. they did that. And mm. and then another good thing is my first landlord owned most of the buildings in, in, in Lanham. Okay. He was trying to be like them. Mm. Oh. So I said, hey, I'm renting from these guys. You're trying to be like two of their uh-huh. buildings. Uh-huh. So if they trust me. Come on. Yeah. 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 So we made the deal happen. Okay. Nice. Yeah, that yeah. was the third location. A but, good reference point. Yeah. <laughs> but um most of the buildings, uh, most of our build outs are anywhere between four hundred to eight hundred thousand dollars. Mm. All of that, how much of that do I pay? <laughs> Zero. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's something you can negotiate, but it yeah. is expensive. Yeah. I my husband is a commercial electrician. So like I be knowing these things are expensive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's all I know is yeah. expensive. Okay. Yeah. It's about negotiating because there's a win win situation for them. You know, mm-hmm. um, for them to have a tenant in there paying mm-hmm. them money. And if you negotiate, let's say if they're charging, I don't know, twenty dollars a square feet and mm-hmm. you negotiate to pay them a little bit more, twenty one, twenty two, mm-hmm. uh, they'll make more money from you in yeah. the long run. Uh and they're not gonna have somebody offering them paying them that much. Yeah. Right, right. right. So right. Okay. Ugh. So uh during you know, so like uh, we're actually kind of well we're kind of getting through it, this whole COVID thing. Um, but like during COVID were you all able to stay open? Yeah. Um so you were able to stay open. Yeah, I had to fight for it though, because a lot of the buildings they were trying to close. Mm-hmm. That's why mm-hmm. my landlords, you can't close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you cannot close. Yeah. We are essential. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We have businesses in here that are healthcare. We have yeah. businesses in here that need mailing service. We have businesses in here that cater to the government and stuff like that. You can't close us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're essential. So we didn't close. Okay. All of our any of our locations we didn't close. That's good. And that helps your tenants because some of those tenants, let's just say if they were um uh, lash techs mm-hmm. and if they had a storefront, they were gonna be closed. Yeah. They were. So <laughs> uh during COVID we had we doubled. Mm. during COVID oh. because a lot of the different locations you know individual shops they were closing them yeah. because they were just salons yeah, yeah. we're yeah. not just a salon, just a salon. We're office spaces yeah so some of the, a lot of these um, you know entrepreneur entrepreneurs they came looking for us mm-hmm. and when one finds us then there's like a whole bunch of them so during COVID we so COVID happened quote unquote in March, right? Yeah. During that time, a lot of people we had a slump. Okay. You mm-hmm. know, in sales. But then the next month, April, May, we sold more offices than we've ever sold. We sold 70 offices in one month in May. Oh. Mm. May 2020. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Now from a consumer standpoint, right? So I'm the entrepreneur who comes looking for you. Yeah. Um, how long is the lease? So we have uh, varying leases. We have month-to-month leases, and okay. we have a year leases. And okay. even with the year leases, it gives you an option to cancel. Uh, as long as you let us know mm-hmm. in 90 days that you'll be leaving, Okay. we waive all the fees. Look at that. Yeah. Come on, entrepreneurs. Flexible. Flexible. About. Yeah, where can you, you can't get that type of flexibility no, you can't. nowhere else. Yeah. Some of our competitors, if you sign a two-year lease, you got to stay there two years. Yeah. If you I cancel can. it, you got to pay the rest of that two years. <gasps> mm. Yeah. Um, it's us, like I'm canceling. I ain't got the money. That's yeah. the whole point. <laughs> right. Yeah. And during COVID, <laughs> that system was tested because okay. a lot of people did put in their 90 days. 90 days. Yeah. But what happened was they I don't think they thought we were going to uh, approve it. Mm. We did approve it. Yeah. But when that 90 days came up, came up, they were like, you know what? I just want to stay. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. I stay. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I, I see light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, right. exactly. We're going to make yeah. it. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so they stayed, and we doubled. We doubled. We went from, that's when we went from, what, uh, seven locations to 12? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Do yeah. you, um, so at this moment, you are renting spaces in all the office, in all the buildings. Do you own any buildings now? I don't, not right now. Is that, you smiled, is that up next? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I figured. I figured. You see, I'm there's a lot it. more flexibility when you own a building. Yes. Than not, but uh, I mean, we could own a building now. But um, my goal is, if I start to own buildings, I want to be buying a building every three months. So um, I'll wait to that point. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Okay. That's boss. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the every first, three months. Yeah, every three months. But the first goal right now is for us to get to twenty five locations mm-hmm. before okay. two thousand twenty five. And so you're just in this area, meaning like uh, DC, Maryland, Virginia. Yeah, DMV area right now. We're going to be launching our first Virginia location in October. So Alexandria and Fairfax will come in there. Okay. And then. Do you plan to expand beyond the DMV? I want to have five hundred locations. Okay. Yeah. So ten in each state. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to? Uh, I learned a lot about franchising last episode. Do you plan to franchise at all? Possibly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If that's what it takes for us to grow, yeah. Okay. Uh, but if we can continue to do it debt free the way we've been doing it, mm-hmm. debt free. Wait, circle back. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't get to that point. This is happening debt free. Of course. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing about it is, a lot of our competitors that that. I've studied that went out of business during COVID. Okay. Um, was part of their problem was they had a lot of debt mm. Mm. and they had a lot of people in the pie. Okay. You know what I mean? And sometimes what happens when you got a lot of people that don't have the same vision is that when, when they need their money for other things that they're working mm-hmm. on, mm-hmm. they'll take their they money, want for, their other, money. Exactly, yeah, yeah. for other things that they're working on. But then that suffocates the business. Right. I mean, we had a competitor that was local that had 12 locations, beautiful space, Mm -hmm. but they went out of business during COVID. Mm. I feel like I know that competitor. I feel like I know exactly who you're talking about. I can't think of the name off the top of my head, but I think I used them. I think that might have actually been Mm. who I used when I did my wedding thing. Yeah, Mm. because they had an app and I went back Mm -hmm. to use the app not too long ago just to see and it was gone. And I was like, hmm, I wonder what happened to them. Yeah. And then our the, and then the bigger competitors that we have, and, and they do a great, great job, you know, like Regis, they mm-hmm. filed for bankruptcy during COVID. Oh, no. Um, mm-hmm. They're just getting out of it right now. 400 of their locations in the U.S. filed for bankruptcy. Wow. Then uh, you have WeWork. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they were they, they lose about $1.2 billion. Mm. Um, and then that's how the CEO had to, you know, they changed yeah, CEOs. Yeah, I saw that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Brought somebody else in. And then, you know, he's trying to clean up house a little bit. But Right. Uh, for me, like whatever business I build, I just try to stay away from bar. I can, we can, we can honestly have 50, 50 locations right now. Yeah, if you borrow, but it's about growing smart. Mm-hmm. Um, so open up a location, let the profits from that location yeah. move on to the next one. But no, we haven't, <laughs> we haven't borrowed any money. Okay. Yeah, we haven't borrowed any money. We have nine hundred tenants and then another nine hundred members. So we have about fifteen, sixteen hundred um entrepreneurs that call us mm-hmm. you know what's the difference between a tenant and a member so a tenant is a, a is a person who has a private office okay right and they're paying anywhere between 499 dollars a month to 1500 dollars a month for their own private office space okay. they have access to it but then you have we have other levels okay. we have like three other levels below that just say let's say if somebody can't commit to being a uh, a private office holder Mm -hmm. they can start off at a virtual mail which is only 49 dollars a month okay and the virtual mail is like to give you that professional address address okay so give you a professional address you can have your mail sent there okay as soon as it gets there we'll call you and let you know hey you have mail here and you can come pick it up during business hours okay then we have the next level up which is a membership where you get the mail service but at the same time, you get to utilize our common area space in any of our 13 locations. Mm. Um, and that's $99. And that's free conference room. It's mm. like Planet Fitness. Right. Yeah, you play just, for the black card. <laughs> exactly. So that, you get the service, you get the conference room for free, you get okay. to use um, all the common areas. And then after that, you have another level up, which is a private desk. It's a it's a nice size room and it's about 10 private desks in there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We provide you the chair, the computer and the uh, desk okay. for $199 a month. 
Mm. Can't beat it. And then after that, when you're comfortable and you don't want to be in the same room as six or seven other businesses, yeah. you upgrade to a private office. I can see, um, as I'm thinking about this, why your first landlord would say, I see the money in this, right? Anytime you take yeah. a common area and you can subdivide it into many pieces, mm-hmm. you know, the people say break it down, weigh it, scale it, and give it. Mm-hmm. Uh, there you go, right? Yeah. But I can also see as a, like, as a landlord or owner of a building, why I would not want to be in this business. It feels like a lot. Yes. So let me ask you a question about the structure of your business, Mm -hmm. because I know that you are not handling all the calls from your tenants. So what does your like (laughs) uh, corporate office situation look like? Yeah, your makeup, the structure of like your business. You know, it's a lot. It's a little bit more hands on. Um, And um, so the way we've over time, we've come to this structure that I kind of like now a little bit. But in the beginning, yes, I was doing all of (laughs) that. Of course you Uh, were. (laughs) But. Uh, each location we have a front desk okay which is called our community assistant okay. and their responsibility is pretty much just make sure that that location is running smooth and well mm-hmm. uh, in terms of just greeting the guests um, taking them to who they're looking for and then just kind of doing some basic stuff mm-hmm. uh, for us um, so and then next up is someone there's two managers for a location so there's a membership manager that takes care of everything membership Mm -hmm. that's the virtual Mm -hmm. mail the membership and the private desk okay then you have a community manager that takes care of the actual tenants okay gotcha so those two managers and the community assistant is responsible for running a location i see Okay. okay right and and that's how it is for each of the location now some the the managers they have multiple locations that they have to take care of okay yeah um, yeah so that's kind of how that works that kind of works and then i just meet with the managers every week on okay. t- uh, weekly and we go over stuff <sighs> now, that's good yeah. it is delegating and stuff but it's like you still ha- your hands on but you're delegating and trusting you know your staff yeah to yeah. run the office right. or run these different locations which is key because and candace and i talk about this all the time but it's like having that partnership even though they're an employee but they're providing that value to help mm-hmm. you to focus on other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're 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 taking care of their their locations. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they're getting paid. Nobody yeah. will do it for free. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> but they're you know, and there's there's incentives built in. Yeah. I love bonuses. Oh. I love the use of bonuses. Always establish a salary, but always establish bonuses so the people who actually perform get paid based on their performance. Okay. Um. So that kind of keeps everybody going. Okay. Yeah. Um, and and keeps us growing. Um, yeah. So numbers numbers look good. Do you also still manage perfect staffing? Is that still happening? I do still run perfect staffing. Okay. We have fifty employees there, and I have a third business that I run. What's what? the third business? <laughs> it's it's a property management company. I started uh, two years ago. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like all of them touch. Yeah, 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 yeah. They all touch in a way. Um, you know, perfect office. Most of the employees that work there are temps from perfect staffing mm. oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. okay you find this temps and you're like you know would you like a full-time job <laughs> exactly yeah it's smart okay. guy yeah, yeah. <laughs> and do you property manage any of the places that you rent for not yet so most of our property management right now uh, and, and the perfect property is a, is a longer term play okay most of the properties that we manage right now are just like you know busy entrepreneurs mm-hmm. that have one or two properties but oh. they can't manage it um so then they'll reach out to us and for 99 dollars a month we manage their properties we find them tenants we collect rent we do all that stuff for 99 dollars a month okay so this is residential property residential property oh okay. okay and then um eventually and then i have properties myself too mm-hmm. I have about 12 properties that i push on to perfect property and they manage that for me mm-hmm. um and then uh but eventually we're going to be going into commercial property management mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, perfect property most likely be the engine that we use to buy these buildings. Gotcha. And Got then it. rent it out to perfect office. Nice. So smart. Yeah. So smart. Yeah, this is smart. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Like I hear I'm hearing you talk about, you know, the property management, but not even thinking about, of course, you could then eventually <laughs> buy the building yourself, manage it yourself, and rent it out to your other business. I don't even let me tell you something. I don't know a lot about taxes, <laughs> but I feel the loopholes. I feel them accumulating. Okay. I don't know a lot, but I know something. Yeah. Yeah. You need a good tax accountant. <laughs> I hope you have one. Yeah. Because I'll be struggling. 
Dang. <laughs> Beautiful. I love yeah, it. Yeah, that was great. I love it. So here's um, a personal question, just, yes. you know, feeding for myself. Do you have industrial properties that you rent? Like, have you ever thought about doing industrial commercial properties? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've thought about that. And, you know, that's all part of once we start acquiring different assets mm. and then activating those assets. We thought about, you know, even events, even with what mm -hmm. we have now. Okay. Um, surprisingly, we don't really have big event spaces. Okay. But we have event spaces in within our space. Mm -hmm. And even our event revenue alone, mm -hmm. you know, is close to half of a million dollars. You know, and just. I revenue. believe it. Right. Okay. Um, and yeah, we don't even really have, have them. Have yeah. Them. Yeah. So that's another line of business that we're going to be um, looking into. And the people um, need it because yeah. the weddings are backed up from COVID. Oh, yeah. They are like well, double stacked on top of each other. Well, here's mm -hmm. the thing. We don't have that many event spaces, like true dedicated event spaces in PG County. And I'm not talking about mm -hmm. uh, like the the mansion joining up in Marlboro where everybody ha has their wedding at. I Newton can't, White. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not talking about those type. Yeah. I'm talking about like the the smaller boutique yeah, ones. Yeah, like 100 like to 200 Like 100 people. to 200. Like there's not that many spaces yeah, there really is, in PG right? County for yeah. that. And I thought about it, but I'm going to let you go have it. <laughs> I don't know. I would be you, benevolent. There's enough, you might be loafing, there's, Candace. There's a, there's enough for everybody. Trust <laughs> you me. might yeah. be loafing. I know. We, I, I, we'll have to talk. We'll have to talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Ride the truck up to the event space. Oh, God. Right, I'm right. just but, in my head. But I do have a personal question. Okay. When are we going to get a perfect office in Upper Marlboro? You know what? <laughs> it's not no space in Upper Marlboro. You know what? I've been digging, digging, digging. It'll happen. It got to happen. Upper Marlboro yeah, sucks I've, when it comes to commercial real estate. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've been digging, 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 digging. Buoy. Yeah. I keep hitting it. Every time I hit it, it, it comes to... That's why we have... We have literally... We're going to have three spaces in Lanham. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. it's like right there. It's right there. Mm -hmm. And that's... You know, I keep trying to push into Buoy and Upper Marble and Clinton. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And eventually we'll find something. But right now... Just, just nothing is yeah, coming it up. It hasn't popped up. Yeah. Uh, and you can tell there's a demand for it. Yeah. When we opened up our second Lanham location, we have we had a total of 45 offices. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. The day we opened, 40 of those offices leased. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what I would do with that type of success. <laughs> God be keeping me humble, okay? <laughs> He's keeping yeah. me so, so humble. So 40 of those uh, <laughs> leased up. And we just added another... Um, 30 offices upstairs and those are gone too mm -hmm. so that prompted me we're getting ready to open up a third Lanham location mm. that's going to have about 60 offices again wow um, yeah nice that's nice well I mean and with your competitors going under it's a perfect time cause yeah I got a vision okay and we'll wrap afterwards <laughs> but I got a vision for Ghost Stretch oh I have a vision for Ghost Stretch and I'm not even a part of Ghost Stretch okay? <laughs> do you hear me I'm ready. Let's yeah. do it. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, do you have anything else, Candice? No, I do not. I so. do not. And I'm just, <laughs> listen, the man had $1,000 in his bank account. I think the important thing we've discussed is doing the work, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Adding value as a manager of people, right? Because I currently manage people. One of the things that um, I have a hard time with when it comes to evaluation season is that there are people who clearly... Um, want to do better want to like you have like rock stars on your team mm -hmm. right and who are always putting in the work and always doing better and i try to um always it's like an uh, how do i put it it's like i try to pour into them the that because a lot of times you get complaints at evaluation season right mm -hmm. so evaluation season comes you've got your rock stars on your team you got your people who are just doing enough to get a paycheck right, right like just right. getting by and a lot of times as a manager you lean harder on your rock stars because you can depend on them they mm -hmm. get, and and what i try to like as a mentor tell those folks is like i know sometimes it seems unfair and as a manager of people i try to watch my how i spread the work around right but there's value that you're adding. Mm -hmm. Keep that. Put it on your resume. Add those bullets. Know that you're going to be able to take that knowledge, flip it, because I trust you with this project. I can't trust Keisha. I can trust you. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm giving it to you. Know that I'm giving it to you for a reason and not just to work you to death, right? Yeah. Know that there's value there. Take that, flip that, put that to the next job. Like, I'm all about helping the person reach the next level. And I know sometimes, um, it can feel like, why would I, one thing that people struggle with is like, well, why would I do that? They're not paying me for that, right? right? Mm -hmm. But know that 
do it. There's a reason to do yeah, it, right? Yeah, do yeah. it, expand, get the knowledge, and then do what you will with it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, right. so we doing the work. Mm-hmm. We're not gonna let the thousand dollars in our pocket <laughs> stop us, okay? Uh-huh. In fact, we're gonna let that drive us, yes. okay? We're gonna say there's bigger yeah. and greater. And when God calls your name, please listen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Just continue to think big. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Don't think small. Yeah. Think big. Think bigger. You yeah. Know? Jay Z yeah. got this famous quote, and I always be saying it when I when I especially when I be rapping this up. But he says, "Y'all think small, I think biggie." Right. Like he says that all the time. Right. <sighs> Yeah, and yeah. look at what Jay Z does on okay. the business side of things. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, we have had a great time. One of the things that we always ask to close out the show, we kind of got a little bit of it as we were wrapping up. But if you would like to share with the people, what's up next for Chico the man? What's up next for the perfect string of things? Is perfect office, perfect property, perfect staffing? Yeah. Anything else you like to share? And it doesn't even have to be related to the, the yeah. perfect, the perfect brand. <laughs> Yeah, no, for me, it's just like every morning when I wake up at four o'clock in the morning, I just ask myself, what can I do today that I didn't do yesterday? Mm. How could I be a better me? Mm -hmm. How could I be great? How could I, you know, add value? Because if you just focus on just adding value Mm. to those around you, Mm -hmm. oh my gosh, you'll be so blessed, like beyond like your Mm. imagination. Like I just thought when I was quitting my job, that I just wanted to make a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Yeah, <laughs> like that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. uh huh. But the thing is, most of the time, even when we think we're thinking big, we're really actually thinking small, mm-hmm. right? God's got much bigger things for us, and a lot of times when we're thinking, we're just thinking just for ourselves. We're being selfish. Mm. Some people say, "I already make enough money." No, mm-hmm. you don't. Mm. You don't. Yeah, you're only thinking about just you. Mm-hmm. What about? A hundred people that you can take care of. What about a thousand people that you can take care of? What about people outside of your family that you can take care of? You don't make enough money. Mm-hmm. You're not adding enough value. Because if you are adding enough value, you can take care of the whole entire world. Mm-hmm. Period. So yeah. we just got to figure out ways to add more value. So when I wake up in the morning, I ask myself, how could you add more value today than you added yesterday? Yeah, I yeah. like it. Well, it's motivating. It is. It is. It is indeed. <laughs> how can you add more value? Add, put that on a bracelet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, how can you add more I value? Like yeah. I like that. I like that. We thank you so much, Chico. No, yeah. thank you all for having me. No, thank yes. you. Thank you. So where can the people find you? They can find me on Instagram. I'm on there as uh, Chico the Dream Chaser. Um, so from there, there's a lot of other stuff where you can find me. But mostly on Instagram every single morning, 5 o'clock a.m., meet me there. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. he has these messages every morning. Okay. And my and my wife put me on to him first, like these motivating, uplifting yeah. messages that are full of energy. So it's sure to wake you up. Okay. <laughs> I'll wake you up. I'll be the first thing you hear in the morning. Uh, Five AM in the morning in the yeah. elevator. If- <laughs> and it's like, it's like you starting with like good morning entrepreneurs yeah, or good something morning, like that. Entrepreneurs and welcome to Sunday. You yeah. know, and then blah, 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 blah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, the man said meet him there at five o'clock. I'm yeah. going to catch it on repeat at six. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 but that's yeah. fine. I'll tell you this. <laughs> if you can meet me there 30 days in a row, you'll be successful. Because <laughs> that tells me one thing. You're waking up 5 a.m. in the morning when nobody else is waking up. Yes. Right. Well, my husband is waking up. But <laughs> right. you know, that's the end of yeah. <laughs> if you can meet me there Monday through Friday, okay. 30 days in a row, trust me. Did you you get in a Chico guarantee? You'll be ready. Thirty days in a row. <laughs> yep. Five a.m. Yep. Meet him there. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. man, man. And I've been you're... doing this for ten years. Really? Ten years. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Cause what I... time do you go to bed? I go to bed when I sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, so something that I think that's pretty cool about your Instagram, mm-hmm. like I often see you post some of your old posting statuses. From like 2012, and you can see like how he was speaking things mm. into existence. Into an existence, yeah. and it's like when you look at present day, mm-hmm. the things that he was tweeting about or or or, or, or yeah, making statuses yep, yep. about mm-hmm. back in 2012. It's like dang, like that's tight. Yeah, I like to see that. Yeah, I, I like to see it for people. I have a hard time with that because there are things that I want to speak into existence and I speak it to my family, my friends, to Kaylin, mm-hmm. whatever. I have a hard time putting it into the atmosphere like via 
Um, but I have a hard time with people's perception of me. That's an either, That's another episode. Yeah. We can don't, save that. don't worry about that. Put it out there in the atmosphere. Because really? sometimes, like, every morning I wake up, I try to look at my memories on yeah. Facebook, right? And stuff that I said 14 years ago or yeah. 12 years ago, even before I even started my business, yeah, I see them. Okay. Reality. I always told myself I wanted a BMW. I always told myself I wanted to be in a loft, a penthouse yeah. loft. I've always told myself different things. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's just like to see them come true, right? Yeah. You acknowledge them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then at the same time, I know the dreams that I have for myself in the future, yeah. which encourages me because I know if I made those things happen, right. I will make those other things happen. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. And then when you put it out there in the atmosphere, uh-huh. you know one thing you can't do? You can't take, take it back. back. Oh, my God. I know that for right. sure. So people are going to be people are going to hold well, you accountable. This is the thing. So you put know? it out there. Okay. And and just to piggyback off that, and this is something I tell my wife also, like because I know we're looking at it about it from one angle, like putting it out there because what if you don't do it and being held accountable? But I I think of it like this, like the the glass half full. Yeah. What if you put it out there and somebody's out there that sees that that has the opportunity to help you? That is so. True. So it's like put it out there because you never know who's listening, who's watching, and it's like oh, I never knew Candace was into print. Mm. Yeah. You know, granted, you've been posting it, but it's like, yeah. well, shoot, well, I got this print shop that she can run that yeah. my grandfather used to run. Yeah. So it's like you never know yeah. who be who be watching. Yeah. And I guess I have to think of it. I have to start thinking of it from a, from a more positive standpoint, because I think I'm always um, careful of people, other people's feelings. Right. Like I'm an empath like that. And so I know about me like I know I there are things that I posted like. I remember the year before we bought this house that we're in now, new new year, new goals, getting the house in a year. And I did it literally to a year to the mm-hmm. day, right? And so I know that I can do these things. I think I'm always careful of people who are like, it's a, it's a like, who are you not to be great type deal? You know, it's a thing. But today I have learned, right? From Chico, we putting it out in the atmosphere. I learned from Kim Profit that we putting our bills on auto pay. I was just <laughs> yeah. learning. Okay, that's what yeah. we're doing one step at a time. Yeah, yeah, <sighs> yeah. Put it out there. Put okay. it out there because you know your opportunities. Opportunities are constantly looking for someone or somewhere to reside. Yeah. Right. Okay. So if you put it out there in the atmosphere, now your opportunities know to come to you. Find me. Right. In but if you don't put it out there and you're not loud enough. They don't know where to go. Okay. They're mm. just hanging around. Yeah. So put it out there. If you want a million dollar business, say you want a million dollar business, but then back it up with, with action. Do the action. Work. <laughs> because the secret to anything is W O R K, work, yes. right? Fate without works is what? Dead. Right. There it is. You know, mm. so most people read that and they read it wrong. It said fate without works with the S. So you can't Many just works. do one work exactly. and say it didn't work. Yeah. You gotta keep putting in the work works. Okay. Yeah. until it becomes a reality. Exactly. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. All right. That was tight. So on that note, Stream Chasers, mm-hmm. you had a great episode. I hope you've taken lots of things. I hope you had your notepad, your pen, your paper. Rewind it back. Listen to it again. Write it down. We got as many quotables, okay? Kaylin will hit y'all with about 15 million uh, social media posts <laughs> from this episode, okay? He better. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you can find us on YouTube, Spotify, mm-hmm. Google Podcasts, Apple iTunes, all the places. But most importantly, you can find us at www.streamchasers.work because stream chasers do the work. And that's it. And with that, you have been paid. Just got paid.